All right, uh, good evening, everyone. For our attendees participating virtually who would like to access this meeting in a language other than English, please follow these instructions. In your meeting slash webinar controls, click interpretation. That will, you most likely find that at the option at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Choose from our list of available languages. If you want to only listen uh, in that language, click mute original audio. We will recognize, we recognize that your language may not be available tonight, and for that we apologize. Please follow up with us at civilianoversight at somervillema.gov so we may do better in the future. I will pause a moment here to give folks a chance to find those settings. Okay. My name is Lance Davis, and I am the chair of the City Council's Committee on Legislative Matters. I call this meeting to order. This is the first of what will be several public meetings to discuss the idea of establishing a system of civilian oversight of the Somerville, Somerville Police Department. The purpose of these meetings is to hear from and be guided by the public as we move through that process. Because most, if not all, of the City Council is present to listen to this meeting, the Massachusetts Open Meeting Laws require that we make this a formal meeting of the City Council. So there are a few formalities that we have to get out of the way uh, to open the official committee meeting. And the first is to let you know that just over a year ago, Governor Baker issued an order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law. And both the Governor and Mayor Curtis Tony issued orders imposing strict limitation, limitations on the number of people that can gather in one place. Because of that, we can't yet hold meetings like this in person, so that's why we're all here online conducting this meeting via remote participation. This meeting is being recorded, and an audio video recording will be available on the City of Somerville website and local cable access government channels. Next, we have to take attendance, but only of the City Councilors. Uh, we are assisted this evening by our clerks, Kim Wells and Rose Durham. Uh, Ms. Wells, would you please call the roll? Yes, of course. Roll call for attendance. Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor Scott. Present. Councillor Ewan Campen. Here. Councillor Klingen. Present. Councillor Valentine. Present. Councillor Mba. Present. Councillor Rossetti. Present. Councillor Strezzo. Present. Councillor White. Here. Councillor Niedergang. Here. And Councillor Davis. Here. Ten councillors are present, Mr. Chair, and one is absent. Okay, thank you. Councillor McLaughlin, uh, let me know he is at another meeting and he will join us as soon as he is able. So the item before us is number 210235, calling upon this council to create a police commission and a community police review agency. Because the primary purpose of this meeting is not to deliberate on the matter, but rather to listen and provide the public an opportunity to hear from, uh, from Mason and Irene, I would ask that members hold any comments or questions until we take up this item at a future meeting for the purpose of deliberation. I would also note that we have provided a transcript of the statements that folks intend to make at this meeting to our translators. For any discussion that was not provided in advance, they will translate in real time, which they are perfectly capable of doing. But if possible, we'd like to limit that. Uh, so now a quick history of how we got to this point. The item before us was submitted by Councillors Ba, Scott, and myself in early June of last year. We put this together in response to the nationwide protests following the killings of George Floyd, Tony McDade, Breonna Taylor, who were just the latest in a long line of incidents in which unarmed Black Americans were killed by police. In the weeks leading up to that submission, among the many calls for police reform was a resolution submitted by U.S. Representative Ayanna Presley and a list of items created by Just Us Somerville calling for the creation of a civilian review committee with oversight of the Somerville Police Department. The city council item was then referred to this committee to pursue. At the same time, I worked with the mayor's office to establish funding within the city council's budget to hire for the first time ever staff to lead this process on behalf of the council. Those hires, public outreach coordinator Mason and legislative and, and policy analyst Arian DeSena will lead the process this evening. So barring any objections from members of the committee, 
I would like to sponsor Mason and Irim to speak and to introduce a few representatives from the community to make brief statements as well. Seeing no objection, Mason and Irim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Respected attendees, thank you for giving us your Wednesday evening. I do not take your presence lightly. I want to give a brief outline of tonight's meeting, which is the City Council's first community meeting on the topic of civilian oversight. The goal of tonight is to get us all on the same page about what civilian oversight could mean for Somerville, how we arrived at this point, and how you can get involved as we move forward. We will hear from Ms. Arim DeSena, the legislative and policy analyst for the City Council, who will give a presentation on civilian oversight models from across the country. Civilian oversight is a term that gets used a lot, but it can mean different things to different people. And the primary goal of tonight is to introduce some of those ideas around civilian oversight and to start the community process to establish what it, what it should mean in Somerville. Immediately following the presentation given by Ms. DeSena, we will hear from some community members as they bravely articulate equity and share their thoughts on what they want to see from this process. Then I will return to summarize the evening and share next steps about how to get involved in our work to establish civilian oversight in Somerville. I want to note that tonight's presentation has been pre-written and translated into multiple languages for accessible and equitable purposes. For that reason, I am asking participants to limit their remarks to what has been prepared, and we are not holding a question and answer period as a part of tonight's meeting. While tonight's meeting is not the space to engage in dialogue, please know that we are planning additional follow-up opportunities for extensive dialogue, dialogue and conversation in the coming weeks and months. Next slide. From my appointment, it has been my desire as public outreach coordinator to access the symbiotic relationship between the city council, the mayor's office and the residents of Somerville. I have always advocated in reach. I have met with multiple city councilors and members of the mayor's administration. And through this in reach, I believe that the intentionality required to carry out this process is present. Tonight, we openly receive the impact that this process has on our neighbors. I also have heard frustrations from members of the public, the, impo the impact of the impulsivity conducted by our city council and our mayor's office regarding solution-based approaches, approaches that may, that may in in for increased transparency and a decrease in public trust. And there is a lot of work to do for our local government to build public trust. I also recognize that our city staff are facing an enormous number of priorities, even more than usual due to COVID-19. And that can make it difficult to accomplish everything we want to accomplish. Despite all of this, it has not minimized the city's desire to do and be better. Tonight's work is one specific part of our collective response to the cries of racial injustices and police brutality across the nation in the summer of 2020. And of course, we recognize that this work that many people in our community have been committed to for many years and decades before that. Tonight, you will hear ideas that may align with your own, or maybe they won't. You may feel curious, confused, inspired, disheartened, disappointed, dismissed. That's all right. I'm requesting that you listen with an open heart, incline your ear and heed the call to act. And with that, I'd like to introduce Irene DeSena to give a presentation. Thank you, Mason. Good evening, everyone. My name is Irene DeSena. I've been hired as the legislative and policy analyst for the city of Somerville to help establish a civilian oversight committee. In this role, I have reviewed different oversight agencies across the country in order to understand their powers and authority their pros and their cons, all in order to help create the infrastructure of a civilian oversight committee here in Somerville. I will first cover a bit of why the city of Somerville is taking on this endeavor, 
and what steps the city has taken. I will talk a bit about how oversight has become popular across the country, and then I will provide some examples of oversight agencies. As you learn about the different structures, please think about what you would want from a civilian oversight committee in Somerville. What of these examples may work in this community? What may not work? How you might engage with such a committee? When we have further community events where you can share your thoughts, your feedback is necessary in helping shape a civilian oversight committee. That is the best fit for Somerville. Civilian oversight of law enforcement has come to the forefront in the wake of protests against police violence last summer, abolishing police efforts to reallocate police budgets and creating civilian oversight committees of police are examples of the national demand for police reform ignited by the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor last summer. And in the wake of national outcry, the city of Somerville officially declared systemic racism a public safety and health emergency. Now discussions about reimagining and reframing policing have been taking place in Somerville before last summer. As recently as last year, Somerville City Council held a town hall meeting regarding police community relations where residents discussed their interests implementing specific changes in de-escalation techniques, police body cameras, unarming police officers at our own regular patrols, and requests for more transparency of the Somerville Police Department. Before then, the City Council had also undertaken multiple initiatives related to policing and public safety, some of which include the Welcoming City Ordinance, which among other things declares that immigration status shall have no bearing on an individual's treatment by city agencies or departments, the surveillance, the surveillance oversight and face recognition ban, which reduces the threat to privacy and common misidentification of people, particularly women and people of color. Overhauling the confirmation process and formally rescinding the gang ordinance have all been within the last couple of years. In addition, following the widespread demand for police reform last summer, the city council and mayor's office reallocated approximately just over 7% of the Somerville Police Department's budget to other social services. The process of creating a civilian oversight committee is the step in which we are in now. History shows that the concept of civilian oversight of law enforcement became politically popular during post-civil rights era, where there was a pattern of police misconduct accompanied by the government's failure to address these problems in a transparent way. Racial or ethnic profiling and allegations of discrimination have, are often at the heart of the movements to introduce community oversight. We've seen the reason for activism increase in these last few years, specifically for cases where police caused the death of Eric Gardner, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, Philando Castile, and more recently, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Communities are more frequently looking to civilian oversight as a way to enhance police accountability across a variety of fronts. In a 2019 survey conducted by the University of Chicago, it, in, it is indicated that civilian oversight has become a sufficiently normal element within the police accountability infrastructure. In addition, a Tufts University survey conducted in November 2020 shows that Somerville residents are overwhelmingly in favor of establishing a civilian review board to oversee the Somerville Police Department. As it stands, residents can only make complaints of alleged police misconduct to the police department. And the results of this survey show that more than two thirds of Somerville residents indicate that a civilian review board should have its own power to investigate allegations against police officers. So what is civilian oversight? The National Association for Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement, also known as NACOL, is a nonprofit organization that works to enhance accountability and transparency in policing and building community trust through civilian oversight. The organization describes the general function of civilian oversight as community-based review boards where complainants are given a place to voice concerns outside of the law enforcement agency. We now know that effective civilian oversight can hold the police department accountable for officers' actions and can improve the quality of the department's internal investigations. This can lead to transparency of the police department and build community trust. 
As of right now, there are over 150 forms of civilian oversight agencies in the United States, including four in Massachusetts, which are in Boston, Cambridge, Pittsfield, and Springfield. As you continue to hear about civilian oversight, keep in mind that the common goals among all the types of oversight are to improve public trust, to ensure an accessible complaint process, to increase transparency with police investigations, to promote thorough and fair investigations, and to deter police misconduct. So the type of oversight that is adopted will essentially have procedures in place to achieve these goals. These aims are what have been at the center of the civilian oversight structure. So NACL has also categorized civilian oversight into four groups with specific goals and purposes of each group. They are review focused models, investigative models, and auditor slash monitor models. Although these models can serve as examples of kinds of civilian oversight Somerville can have, what would work best for Somerville is what the community needs and that may be something different or a combination of these models. These types of models are known as hybrid models since they may combine aspects of the other models in order to create the best practice of civilian oversight to meet an individual community's needs. I will go over the characteristics of each model. And as I do so, please keep in mind what type of oversight you see working best in Somerville. Review focused models tend to be civilian boards or panels that examine the quality of internal affairs investigations and include community input. They tend to be led by community members on a volunteer basis, which is why their scope is limited to review. These types of models can be an alternative point in reporting alleged police misconduct to a police station. So someone who does not feel comfortable or safe to make a complaint against a police officer to the police department can do so directly to this agency and the agency then reports it to the police department. This agency relies on completed police investigations which means if someone were to make a complaint against a police officer to this type of agency, the agency would inform the police department directly. And after an investigation is completed by the police department, the oversight agency may review the police department's investigation, its conclusions, and can review the thoroughness of the investigation. Review focused models can also issue agreement or disagreement with internal affairs findings. They can make recommendations to police procedures but there's no guarantee that the police department will adopt those recommendations. Investigative models can also review completed internal affairs investigations, but they differ by having the authority to conduct their own independent investigations. For this type of model, the civilian oversight agency may be composed of civilian members and professional investigators so that the community is represented and at the same time, the quality of the investigation can be similar to that of the police departments. Similar to review focused models, an investigatory uh, civilian oversight committee reviews complaints about alleged police misconduct from community members. It would have to let the police department know, of course, of the complaint, but it would be able to open its own investigation without having to wait for a report from the police department. The scope of this type of model includes classifying complaints, identifying witnesses to be interviewed, and determining relevant evidence to review. A benefit of this type of model is that civilian witnesses may be more willing to be involved and forthcoming in an investigation if it is conducted by an independent agency separate from the police department. The scope of complaints that are to be investigated can vary. It usually depends on what is best for the community, but examples include use of force complaints, bias policing, false imprisonment, and harassment, among other things. These models also have authority to recommend disciplinary action if they find an investigation calls for such a need. Auditor slash monitor models have an ongoing auditing authority over the police department. Similar to the other categories, these models serve as a substitute point for complaints against the police and can investigate those complaints. But the added goal of auditor slash monitor models is its large scale systemic reform. These models also usually have the authority to investigate other law enforcement activity like internal complaints, police training and other police related procedures. These models analyze trends and patterns of police conduct to determine what policies or procedures may need to change 
or what benefits or costs the community, all to affect broader change in the police agency as a whole, as well as an individual units with problematic complaint history. Hybrid models are oversight agencies that work best for an individual community. These models combine aspects of other models like receiving complaints, being civilian led, independent investigations, and so on. So an oversight agency can review completed complaints and also analyze patterns and trends to affect systemic change. Perhaps it may not conduct its own independent investigations or an agency can conduct its own independent investigations and have a separate oversight committee that only reviews completed investigations. Some jurisdictions have made changes to their systems of oversight that have led to the creation of more complex multi-tiered systems. So an agency can have an investigative branch and an auditing branch that both fall under the purview of the oversight committee. An example close to home of this is Boston's new oversight agency that was recently approved. The ordinance for the oversight agency creates a three branch office that would include an investigatory branch and the police department internal affairs branch and a civilian review board branch. Ultimately, the structure of hybrid models is derived from what authority and function is desired. In addition, other logistical factors of the models, such as who serves on these committees, whether they are paid, who to contract, what recommendations can be made to the police department, are also determined by the needs of the community. Essentially, there is no one size fits all approach to civilian oversight. So to summarize the types of oversight models, review focused models rely on completed police department investigations of police misconduct and review those investigations. Investigative models have the ability to conduct their own independent investigations of police misconduct. Auditor slash monitor models focus on overall systemic reform and investigate different police activity and procedures and hybrid models combine aspects of the other models to fulfill the needs of individual communities. Lastly, an important aspect of civilian oversight of police is community input and participation. Starting with community input the type of model that's needed can be determined or drafted, which is where Somerville is now. We'd like to hear from you. Community participation can include serving on these boards, attending hearings, actually making complaints, etc. The participation is what will contrib contribute to the efficacy of the civilian oversight agency. This type of agency works only works with active ongoing participation from the community. So please fill out the community survey if you have not done so yet. Um, the link is available on Somerville City website, and you can also find more information about the Civilian Oversight Committee process there. Thank you for your time and for your attention. Thank you, Erin. Let's take a quick breath. Uh, we recognize that you have received lots of information over these past minutes, and we appreciate your patience with us. It is our desire to ensure adequate education in order to determine the best practice for S Somerville Civilian Oversight Committee. Community feedback um, and input is vital. As a reminder, I would ask that members hold any comments or questions until we take up this item at a future meeting for the purpose of deliber deliberation. I would also note that we have also provided a transcript of statements um, that folks intend to make this evening to our translators. We are going to hear from a couple of community members whose views may or may not align with your own. These presenters may better articulate your concerns and desires. They may be in total opposition to how you feel. Regardless of your feelings, I implore you to follow up with us at civilianoversight at somervillema.gov. I introduce to you Tracy Pratt, um, sorry, <clears throat> Adeline Lining, Tracy Pratt from Just Us Somerville, and Matthew from Defund SPD. Adeline, the floor is yours. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Tracy Pratt, the floor is yours. 
Oh, okay. You want me to go first? You have Adeline first, but I can, I'm it from. doesn't matter. You know, we'll flip a coin. Uh, <laughs> Tracy, you're here. You can go first. Okay. Uh, let me just pull up my notes. Mm-hmm. All right. Good evening. My name is Tracy Pratt. I'm an 11 year resident of East Somerville. This evening, I'll be speaking on behalf of Just Us Somerville. Over nine months ago, on June 7th, 2020, Just Us Somerville introduced ourselves to the city uh, by hosting a rally and vigil to protest the senseless murder of George Floyd and countless other men, women, and children who have been killed or otherwise victimized at the hands of law enforcement officers, those who swore an oath to protect them. At our rally, we unveiled a list of demands, one of which is the topic of, to, is the topic of tonight's discussion. Our demand was as follows, that the city of Somerville establish a civilian review committee that looks at police and and that looks at policies and is composed of those community members most impacted by police. We specifically wanted policies examined that allow use of excessive force. Over the past months, we have discussed this demand, gleaned deeper understanding about civilian oversight committees and broadened the scope of of our initial demand to include the following. Just a moment. Just as Somerville urges the city of Somerville to establish a civilian oversight and review committee composed of a diverse group of city residents and includes members of underrepresented communities that are statistically most vulnerable to excessive use of force practices to include African descended people, Latinx, immigrants, and youth, young adults. The functions of the Civilian Oversight and Review Committee shall be, but not limited to, work independently of police administration and police unions, examine Somerville Police Department policies and practices that have the potential to unnecessarily harm members of the community or are discriminatory in nature, and make recommendations for change. This includes policies that allow excessive use of force. Develop a mechanism to receive community complaints. Decide how complaints will be handled. Um, Monitor the establishment of a system for reporting, investigating, and or referring hate crimes review, investigate, and make recommendations to police, to the, to the police chief in cases of misconduct, subpoena people um, and records when necessary, report findings and recommendations to a person or entity not under the authority or influence of any law enforcement agency. If the committee is to be effective at its functions, it must be provided with the following resources, including but not limited to reasonable budget, appropriate support staff, legal consultation, compensation when necessary, and reasonable authority authority to carry out its tasks. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Ms. Pratt, we will now hear from Ms. Adeline Lining. Hi, thanks for having me. So I didn't grow up afraid of the police. I grew up in a small town in Maine where I was the only person. I'm so sorry. What? Hello? So, oh, there was, there was feedback and I thought there was a problem, but there isn't. And I'm going to restart. Great. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'm Adeline Lining, um, Ward 2 resident. So I didn't grow up afraid of the police. I grew up in a small town in Maine where I was the only person of color and people knew who I was and who my family was. And I felt safe enough to call the police if I needed them. 
Now I live here and my awareness of my identity has evolved. I no longer associate safety with police. While I know that not all police as individuals are to be feared, I do believe that all those operating within the current policing system are in need of oversight. For far too long, the actions of police have been obscured. The rationale behind what is written in the police blotter is unknown. I support civilian oversight because it brings a fresh set of eyes, which I believe will help identify opportunities to change how things have been done. I'm a teacher and we get observed all the time. It's an important part of our practice because it helps us improve our teaching. When I get observed, I appreciate having someone give me feedback around my practice. They notice things that I don't have time to because I'm in the middle of a class. When they are able to observe and report on what they've seen, it helps me reflect on my actions and incorporate their feedback for next time. I believe that this would be beneficial to, police, to policing just as it benefits my teaching. The opportunity to have diverse perspectives and opportunities for feedback strengthens one's practice and allows for reflection and change. I think everyone can benefit from opportunities to for reflection and change and can reflect and grow. And I hope that the civilians that opt to do this work provide that positive experience for police. I see this as a step in an ongoing conversation about how to collaborate as a community. Just as my educational community supports me, we must support one another in the process of bettering our community. Together, we can learn and grow, reflecting on feedback and making the changes that we need to so we live in a community where no one is afraid. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Lining. We will now hear from Matthew from Defund SPD. Matthew with us. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> Just getting ready. Uh, so hi, uh, I'm here speaking with you all today as a member of Defund SPD, a group that started in response to over 4,000 Somerville residents signing a petition to defund the police. Like many of you on the call today, I believe that increased funding and power for police is not going to result in an end to police violence, whereas defunding the police and funding our critical services and programs would have a profound positive impact on everyone in Somerville. Civilian oversight of police has never been a priority for defund SPD for one major reason. Oversight agencies don't have any power. Cambridge has had a police review and advisory board since 1984 that reviews their police department and investigates complaints. In December, Boston City Council approved the Office of Police Accountability and Transparency. Neither police department is legally compelled to do anything about complaints or recommendations made by their respective review agencies. If Somerville is to go forward with civilian oversight of police, there are two crucial factors that will make Somerville's version of oversight meaningful. First, the members of the oversight board have to be elected residents. The board needs to be free from conflict of interest, which means people who work in law enforcement or have close personal or professional relationship with those who do are disqualified. Secondly, the people on the oversight board need to be paid for their work. The amount they get paid should be a livable hourly wage that at least matches the median pay for Somerville police officers. No new police officer may be hired without the approval of the Civilian Oversight Board. The board must have the right to reject all proposed new hires if they feel additional police officers are not required for the safety of the community. They should also have the power to eliminate entire divisions within the police department, including the department as a whole, and redistribute responsibilities to non-law enforcement professionals if necessary. The right to fire cops without interference from police units is just as important as the control over who gets hired. We cannot expect our pro-police, anti-working class, and anti-Black judicial system to, conv to convict abusive police officers. Furthermore, if our system did reliably convict cops, it still prioritizes punishment over rehabilitation and restorative justice. Even with an expanded scope of power and democratic membership, Defund SPD knows that civilian oversight alone will not create the safe and just community we deserve. We know that the surest way to reduce the violence of policing is to reduce contact with the police. Effective community control over safety and well being can focus instead on how to reduce policing power, police presence, and police contact, even as we suggest ways we can continue to build community safety without the involvement of law enforcement at all. We don't just want to create an institution that will react to police misconduct. We don't just want to defund police either. We want to create new systems that handle our community's biggest challenges, such as housing and food insecurity, addiction, domestic violence, and more. Far too often, the people suffering in these situations are placed in more danger when in the presence of an officer. 
This is because police have the power and incentive to respond with violence, detention, and deportation, rather than addressing the systems of white supremacy and economic exploitation that lead to crime in the first place. Some of them won't have the resources to address these issues that we continue allocating three times as much money to police as we do to all social services combined. Thanks. Thank you, Matthew from Defund SPD. What a night. <laughs> Thank you to our speakers for walking in their bravery. Your truth helps. I know that some of you may have feelings, questions, comments, feedback. We want to hear from you. We recognize the work required to effectively, efficiently, and equitably carry out this work. Areem shared with us the work happening locally and nationally. We've heard thoughts from our neighbors. Now it's your turn. We have a few things coming down the horizon and we invite you to engage with us. We have a survey that you can complete accessible in many languages. We are coordinating listening session sessions that will include no more than two of your city councilors. Here, you can share your findings with us. Educate yourself throughout this engagement process. Help me help you as I help our people. In order for us to do better, we must know better. When we know better, we do better. Allegedly, tonight is just the beginning. I thank you for giving us your Wednesday evening. Good night. So thank you all, thank you, Mason. Before we uh, adjourn the meeting of the Le Committee on Legislative Matters and to hear a motion to adjourn, uh, Councilor Niedergang moves to adjourn, as well as would you please call a roll on adjournment? Yes, on adjournment. Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor Scott. Yes. Councillor Ewan Campen. Yes. Councillor Klingen. Yes. Councillor Ballantyne. Yes. Councillor Mba. Yes. Councillor Rossetti. Yes. Councillor Strezzo. Yes. Councillor White. Yes. Councillor Niedergang. Yes. And Councillor Davis. That is 10 committee members in favor, none opposed, and one absent. Mr. Chair, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Good night.